Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today's gonna be a quick video. I'm gonna talk about how I like to travel with comms. My wife and I were recently on a cross-state uh, road trip for about uh, two to three days, and I wanted to make sure that I had a, the ability to communicate in the absence of me not having my vehicle, which has my mobile rig. So we took her car. Her car has no comms whatsoever. So the question is, what do you do? Or in this case, what do I do? when I have to travel in someone else's vehicle, a car rental, basically any vehicle that has no communication abilities whatsoever. So I always travel with my EDC radio, which is the Yaesu FT60R. This is my preferred dual band radio for many reasons I've covered on the channel already. And uh, one thing I like to do is ensure that I always have a SMA to BNC connector because I do like to be able to have options in switching out my antenna and I tend to prefer BNC. Now, the problem with the, uh, the HT with either the rubber duck or the whip is that if you're in the vehicle, you're basically operating within a Faraday cage, which is not allowing the RF to get out as effectively or not at all. Um, it's fine when you get out of the vehicle and you're walking around to get into repeater or do simplex, but in the vehicle, this is not gonna work. So I have a small kit here. Uh, it's just in a simple uh, 511 six by six admin pouch. And the first piece of kit that I like to travel with is a portable, very small mag mount antenna that just uh, magnetically mounts to the hood of the vehicle. And then it has some uh, feed line going into uh, the cab of the vehicle. And I basically just crack the windshield. Uh, this is one I bought on eBay about a year ago. I'm not terribly happy with it. Uh, works fine. Um, I'm actually switching to one by um, Signal Stuff, but uh, that's arriving later today, and I don't feel comfortable talking about it uh, until I actually have some time with it. So this basically allows me to relocate the antenna that is on my HT. And uh, this one has SMA threads. So all I have to do is take the adapter and all, and basically just screw this onto the mag mount. And then all I have to do is connect the other end to the HT. So now when we're in the vehicle, I have the ability to have the antenna outside. So we're gonna get better uh, RF radiation and have a better chance of making our contact. Now, the one awkward thing is if you're in the vehicle having to drive and also uh, hold the HT in your hand, uh, not terribly uh, safe and kind of difficult to operate, in fact. So the second piece of gear that I'd like to carry with me is an external hand mic. And uh, this is the same hand mic I use when I'm trail running. It's clipped directly to my chest rig. And now we have essentially streamlined the operation of being able to just easily uh, key the mic and make the necessary contact. Now the big issue with the HT is it's limited in that it has no external power. So for a two to three day trip like we had this weekend, the question is what do I do or what can you do? Now I've had some really good luck uh, the last uh, maybe two months or so using the AA battery tray uh, that works with this Yesu and actually including rechargeable lithium ion batteries. And I did a review of these pale blue earth batteries and testing with the FT60R, and I pretty much got the same runtime and performance as the NICAD batteries. The one cool difference is that these rechargeable uh, pale blue earth batteries have a little uh, micro USB port here and there's actually a special uh, five volt USB cable with four pigtails. So I can charge four of these batteries at a time in the same way that you would charge your phone. Uh, so most cars today have USB chargers. So very fast, very quick. And if for some reason the lithium batteries fail, I can always stop at any um, liquor store, gas station, uh, whatever, and get some standard alkaline AA batteries. So this is my backup and my preferred way of charging. Uh, four of these take me less than two hours, uh, so it's really quick to recharge this in the field. The NICAD batteries take a very long time, so quite honestly, I'm probably going to buy a second battery tray, um, or not second battery tray, but probably 
buy another set of rechargeable lithium ion batteries. I used to carry, and probably don't need this anymore, the cradle for the FT60R. And the reason why I have to bring the cradle, or most FT60R users do, is because I believe in 2013, uh, there was some regulation that forced Yesu to disable the DC charging input on the radio, and you technically had to use the cradle. So really bulky. Um, and then I had the uh, DC adapter for the cigarette adapter. So I still bring it with me. I'm probably gonna drop it here uh, once I get another set of batteries, but it's an option. Um, if I were to travel uh, and stay at a hotel, uh, very likely I would bring the um, AC uh, wall wart as well. Uh, I really haven't done that recently just because I'm getting a lot of luck with uh, the rechargeable lithium ion batteries. I also carry a second whip antenna. This is the Signal Stick by Signal Stuff. And uh, this is B and C again, so I can either drop it directly on the radio with the adapter or also on the mag mount. Uh, I did some SWR uh, readings for both antennas with the mag mount, and it is about uh, 1.8 to 1 on the 2 meter band, which is acceptable. Uh, I haven't really tested 440 since I don't use 440 all that much. All right. And the last piece of kit I have here is just a small tin. And all I have in here are a few uh, connectors. So I have a, a second SMA to BNC connector just in case that one fails. Uh, I also have a BNC to uh, SO239 or PL259. So I can actually start to stack these. So if there's a uh, antenna somewhere else uh, that I could use that potentially has PL259, I can go ahead and connect that. Um, and then for redundancy, I also have another SMA to uh, PL259 connector. I always forget that these are SO239, PL259, uh, male, female. Anyways, not the point. So that's kind of all the kit that I have here. I do have something that I've shown on the channel many times, but I also have my 50 watt man pack with a full mobile rig that has battery and all the necessary components here uh, and it also has B and C so I could also run this connector to this radio and actually have more power that's not really the subject of this video uh, this is a bit more bulky to travel with uh, I'll link a video where I kind of showed how to use um, this man pack setup as another option um, and I think I did that one with the uh, the motorhome uh, but you guys let me know if you want to see another travel video where I specifically cover the man pack setup let me know. I'm happy to do it. Uh, the last thing I wanted to share with you guys, I don't think I have my phone with me, is that when I'm traveling to another state, I'm not familiar with the repeaters in that area. And there's two takeaways here. Number one, I recommend that everybody learn to program their radio manually. One of the reasons why I love the FT60R is that it is very easy to program repeaters. It takes less than 15 seconds uh, to do that. So uh, that's my first recommendation. If for some reason uh, the instructions for programming it um, are something you don't do too often or are difficult for your radio, uh, I carry three by five laminated index cards with just a small procedure for programming and even saving the memories into my radio. Uh, so I'll put that one up on the screen. And then the last thing that I like to bring with me, which I typically have, is my smartphone. Uh, so I like to have the Repeater Book app installed. And the great thing about the Repeater Book app is that once you download it, you can continue to use that fully offline. It can be in airplane mode, and it will use your phone's GPS to find all the repeaters in your area. And that data set or that database is fully cached and stored on your phone, so there's no need to be online. All right, guys, so I just want to do a quick video before work. Actually, it's like 3 a.m. here and 37 degrees. But I um, just want to share with you some tips I found useful when traveling and you need comms. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Mmm.
I'm working on some swag. This is a, a prototype for the MCOM Tools mug. I've got a couple of different logo variations. Screwed up on this one. I put the logo on the wrong side. So I've got a few more test prints coming. I'll probably do a giveaway once I have some of the um, extra uh, swag in-house. All right, guys, take it easy.